And the Bible tells us that God spoke and everything came into being. He didn't have to use anything. He didn't have to have a blueprint. He didn't have to have some particles or some sort of material to use. God spoke by His sovereignty and it came. There was no light and God said, let there be light and light was. Of every single thing meticulously ruling over the entire universe. There is no such thing as Mother Nature. God rules and reigns over everything. I am the first and the last. I am the sovereign one. I am God. God's sovereignty is over all the nations. Is that a good message for us to hear in these days? In which it seems among the chaos of the nations that this world is about to self implode and to destruct. All the nations are as nothing before Him, meaning they bring about no alteration to His eternal purposes. That God is in charge and that God is in control of all things. The future is the purpose of God being accomplished by God. I have spoken. I will bring it to pass. He knows the future because He runs the future. He accomplishes the future. God is not a fortune teller. He loads the thick clouds with moisture. The clouds scatter His lightning. He does according to His will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. None can stay His hand. It is the bedrock doctrine of all doctrines. It is the atlas that upholds all other truths. The fact is the sovereignty of God is the very central truth of His being, that God is and that God reigns. It is the Godness of God. It is God and God alone who reigns. I am God and there is no one like me. Meaning God stands at the beginning, He declares the end in every step that leads back to the beginning. This is the extent of God's sovereignty. It is a total sovereignty. It is a total and complete sovereignty over heaven, over earth, over hell, over every person in every place. This is the God whom we must preach. This is the God whose name we lift high. This is what separates a man-centered worldview from a God-centered reformed worldview. This is the God that we announce to our lost neighbors and to the ends of the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord reigns. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his robe filled the temple. Now with that in mind, you'll understand verse 1. In the year that we lost our human king, I saw the real king. There never can be much panic set in when you know God is still on the throne. A cloud of black surrounds me. He so you see this heavenly choir in antiphonal response. One seraph here, another seraph over there, and they're singing back and forth, holy, holy, holy. That's their song, exalting this character of God. Because every square inch of this planet is screaming of the Creator and of His glory. He's in a class by Himself. We don't have a category to fit Him in. The 
king is in the hand of the Lord and like a river of water, he turns it in whatever way it goes. He will use a king for the blessing of the people or for the cursing of that nation. He rules over every single nation. Superior in power, superior in authority, superior in rule and control over every other throne. It is high and lifted up. It's not just an authority. It is authority with supremacy of rule. Our salvation is not possible. It is certain. If you look through Scripture, you can almost see it. It's over there. The light is dawning. The sun is rising. The new humanity is being led on the new exodus. We're leaving Egypt. We're leaving Sodom. We're leaving Gomorrah. It's happening now. It's already begun. We're walking into the promised land. We're journeying there. We're not there yet. But very soon the whole earth will become the new creation. We will live forever with our God. The river of life will flow in the new Jerusalem and the tree of life will heal us perfectly. Christianity is now a suffering faith, but Christianity is truly a triumphant faith. Victory is secure. Be liberated from fear. Let the spirit of fear by the gospel be exercised in the church. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Are they a small godder and say that God cannot perform miracles? Are they a small godder that God is subject to the whims of the times? Or is God a big Godder who has established His throne in the heavens, whose sovereignty reigns over all? I see fingers of God in the atom and in the galaxies all the time, every millisecond of history, controlling everything. Jesus Christ, Lord of all, King of kings and Lord of lords. Every, every president and every king on the planet should bow before Jesus. that God has sovereignly created all that there is, that He has spoken and it has come to pass, and that God is governing the affairs of this world? Do you believe that God is sovereign over every human life, every human heart, every human will, every human destiny, the building of the church, the expanse of His kingdom? Do you believe that God undertakes His own cause here upon the earth and guarantees the success of the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ah!